we are so different. We all have nothing in common. I can't, we can't seem to agree on anything. Well, it seems like we're arguing all the time about nothing. Um, we, we have to fix that. So how do we fix it? Yeah, that's another common problem with many couples and it isn't about one year or 10 years, it's just growing in our communication skills. Yeah. And so the good news is we're gonna be covering that this month. Yeah. Yeah. The victorious man. Yes. yes. <laughs> These dynamic pastor duo uh, are pastors of Rivers of Life Church. And we just thank God for their presence today uh, and their willingness uh, uh, to sacrifice a little bit of time to sow into the life of so many people. So we are out of the sizzling summer season and we are moving into uh, dealing with irreconcilable differences. And, you know, that's really based on, you know, relationship development. You know? And uh, I think I was saying before that, you know, it's a, it's a difference between faith and feeling. Sometimes we get in our field and we move away from faith and then we start operating and our behavior part of the feeling is very much faith. And unfortunately, what that looks like is a lot of people. Now, I can understand how the world could be at a high divorce rate, but I can't understand how the body is at a high divorce rate. That tells me because people are more in their feelings than they are in their decisions. Yes, because God hates the yes. I know that because He said that. He says, I hate it. You know, he think the seven things he said he hated in the box. And then he'd come up with this eighth one, which was divorce. Yeah. <laughs> and God's gonna hate a lot of things, you know. So if the God feels that strongly about it, um, then we need to especially be changing. And so uh, there's a couple of um uh I guess you could say uh our listeners who uh, had um some some uh, questions. questions. Yeah. That, that they wanted uh, us to uh, put forth to uh, our guest uh, speakers. And so I'm gonna throw it out there, uh, a couple of these questions. Um, the first one, uh, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a challenge I know for men, uh, but the first question has to do with um, their intimacy, uh, newly raised couple, uh, their intimacy uh, when you have a newborn baby. Uh, now, you know, I think uh, uh, most men know that it takes a little bit of time to recover uh, for, for their bride, but some fellas do. And to navigate that thing uh, is a challenge. And so uh, I'm going to I'm gonna put it to you guys uh, so y'all can share a little bit how you all navigate that in your life. Uh, the second question uh, has to do with uh, a leader highs and and work out to us. That's another um, adjustment that you have to make. So, uh, and other than that, we'll just talk a little bit about uh, how to have these differences can be so apart and as we are. That's, that's, I hate to say it, they may not believe it's intentional, choice that we think uh, is to go in a direction that does not need to be out them walking with us and being with us in a poor situation. So uh, let's stop with that first because we have to do that. Uh, with that. No doubt. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> Uh, well, I would start out to say, um, as new parents, um, your life is really forever changed. You know, you're no longer, it's no longer about us. It's now about this child God blessed us with. And um, we have to 
grow really into parenting, into being a parent. Um, and of course, I've never been a parent. So, and nobody handed me a, a book to follow to say, this is what you do and this is how you handle this. Uh, that didn't happen. Uh, but one of the things that looking back, um, we did as young as a young couple and as parents together, we took a, um, well, it was a child, Christian childbirth training class. Oh. And basically, you know, it was just their first, uh, first time parents is what it was, uh, couples, the, their first child, and just trying to, first of all, initially, let's get to the birth stage. You know, how can the husband help the wife and be an encouragement because the woman is going through lots of things. People, some women, their ankles swell up, you know, it's just a whole big transformation. Some people, the skin change colors, mm. their, yeah, the com your complexion yeah. can change <clears throat> and your weight, obviously your weight change. Um, and it's, it's just a, it's a physically, um, you can be sick with the stomach and you know, your, your energy level is just gone. I mean, it's take all you got to keep moving mm -hmm. around sometimes. Hormones go quick. Your yeah, hormones are all over the place. The yeah. woman can be very emotional. Mm. And unfortunately, the, for some women, especially afterwards, which we have not, I don't think we talked about or considered, it's those women that go through postpartum depression, mm. yeah. which is a whole yeah. different ball of wax yes. all by itself. Yeah. Yeah. But back to being new parents, I think before you become that parent, as a man and as a woman, you need to grow in learning how we can be the best parents we can be. And no, you don't have everything, but how can we minister and ensure that this child is going to come up or be safe, healthy? Because a baby is fragile, yes. you know. Yes. And so I want you want as a couple, you should be concerned about well, how do we handle the baby? What should we do? You know, even down to how do we baby? And your our son was just five pounds seven ounces so he was a little one really little and uh so how do you really even handle a little five pound baby so as we are being honest with each other and saying we're afraid um are we going to do it right you know you know you, you're going to together pray about it you're going to together express your concerns and you're going together say we, we're going to get this. it's going to be all right yeah so as you were talking, I just thought about Vika was six months old and he's in the tub. He's zinc and his head is great. Oh, it's Angel. He's And you played in, in the kitchen. I just, I just, I just tried to talk about that. But let me go back a little bit here. Relating to back during the time that you, you're carrying the child and uh, your husband and wife. And uh, you know we're expecting a baby, and we're excited. So, as a man, he has to be super sensitive to your needs. Wow. He has to be really super because, like you said, you know the hormones is throwing all kinds of things happening. Um, you have to be extremely patient, and it's not easy for all men. To be patient. It's not easy for all men to be patient, and the Lord will teach you to be patient with your spouse. So the Lord taught me to be patient. Um, one of the things that I've learned over the years is that, uh, is that to not only just be patient with her and be super sensitive to her needs, uh, but you know, for us from taking, going, driving to the place, uh, to the hospital, to um, you know, what they needed, uh, what you need at night to get comfortable before you go to sleep, a number of things. There's a number of things that men craving, yeah, all, all, all mm. of them, yeah. Mm. So, on purpose, a man has to be really super sensitive, and the only way I found. Maybe he's super sensitive to what I was about for, for you to for your spouse is to ask the Lord. Wow. Seek the Lord. Wow. I mean, really seek the Lord. Lord. How do I love my wife as Christ loves the church? How do I love her and be patient with her? And God teach you. God is talking. I can honestly he will really teach you how to be patient, how to be supportive, how to be encouragement, how to love her unconditionally because of whatever she said out of her mouth. Because sometimes you can say something out loud, just like you can say something out of your mouth. You know, he, is, he taught me how to be patient. And uh, uh, 
Yes, it was, it was a challenge, but guess what? God rose through the new thing. He did. He did. Yeah. And, you know, as you were talking too, I was thinking, um, I mean, not everybody has the same equation, but I worked up until literally the day before my son was born. Wow. Was, that wasn't planned because I, I had planned on, hey, I'm going to take off these last two mm -hmm. weeks. And last two weeks never came. So that next morning, I got up and I got pain in my hip. Something going on with my hip here, you know. But that was just him turning. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sometimes um, just a woman going through all that she's going through and going to work, you know, your workplace didn't change. Yeah. Wow. They don't care that you're pregnant, mm -hmm. you know. So you got to deal with the issues at work. Then you come home and you're just tired, you know. Um, that that is, it's a pretty that was a pretty rough equation. It really was. Um, but like I say, not everybody has that equation. But that's when the spouse can be, well, baby, just go ahead and put your feet up. Um, I got that, or I just picked up something. Well, you know. Let me massage them though. Let me. Yeah. Let me. Oh, I'll go ahead and run the board. Yeah, yeah, I got the shower. Yeah. The water running, you yeah. just go ahead and jump Absolutely. in there. And, yeah. You know, yeah. there, there are little things that we can do to show love um, and to be considerate. You know, Bible talks about us uh, preferring the other, you know, Absolutely. just esteeming the other. Um, and, and don't look at it like, oh, I gotta go get him, or oh, he's gonna say, I gotta go get her a glass of water. What else do she want? You know, that's not the attitude. Mm -hmm. They, it should be like, okay, this is a period of time that we're going through this. Our child is coming, and I'm here. And, and yes, it's, it's transition for both of us, but we're, we're going to get here, and, and we're going to be excited about what God has for us. You know, with this new life, that together we have yeah. the opportunity to to impact this life we do. It's very easy to be self-centered. And that, you know, all about me, me, me. No, it ain't about yeah. you. <laughs> it's about us. Especially the man. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah. He, he's very easy to get self centered and say, oh, I ain't gonna have I don't think I'm No. This is when the love of God comes in. <laughs> <laughs> this is when the love of God radiates your, your human rationality and your mm -hmm. thinking. Okay, I'm gonna love my wife. Be patient with her. I'm gonna help. But my flesh is saying, what about my I, I needs? Know, I know. I what know. about my, I got needs. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then, uh, I was, uh, then I just thought about how uh, once the baby here, and then the wife went, which one of these do I get the power? <laughs> so both of them wine, both of them cry. Where do I get my needs there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need some, some attention. When I get my attention. That's sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, but you can understand yeah. the rationale. Absolutely. You know? Um, but just because the baby arrived does not mean okay. Yeah, right. Finally, no. I can chase it around the house and catch it. Right. Oh no, no, no. 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 I mean, yeah, pump break, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I mean, to me, uh, I'll speak of my personal experience. I would say, probably giving child, giving childbirth, is probably the hardest thing I could remember. I mean, I mean, physically. A level of, of tiredness that I can't even put into words. Wow. And really, for several days after giving, you just don't have energy. Right. I'm just like, okay. In my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna sit up and I'm gonna do over there and do this. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. After about 20 minutes, that's you it. it. Wow. You can get you worn out yeah. because your body, your well, is is that, and it's like you use muscles that you don't normally wow. use. Yeah. You had to give up some strength. You didn't even know you had to give up. And um, your body has uh, just been through an ordeal Traumatic. that you don't do every day. Yeah. You know, now, I can't even, think, I can't even imagine stuff. the psychological. I mean, it's physical, but the psychological, the psychological. The emotional piece yeah. that you have to endure. I can't yeah. even wrap my head around it. It, it is no. quite the ordeal. And you yeah. need the rest really need some rest and um you know some people not that sensitive like oh it's done it's over now yeah that's yeah. not it, it doesn't <laughs> it's not like that um it it takes quite a while 
quite a, at least, I would say, at least a couple of weeks just to feel like I'm getting in rhythm here, getting in a little bit of a, you know, pattern or something. And then there's the, the woman who's given, who now also has to give to, uh, as a primary caretaker, I would say, to the baby, but also spouse. And so that's where uh, together as a couple, certainly we, we need to talk about how we're feeling. My wife needs to talk about it, husband too. But we need to turn and say, well, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. Dear, mm -hmm. don't worry about it. I got the clothes. Don't worry about it. I got you. Um, your sister says she's coming over to get the clothes. She's going to wash it for my husband, he loves doing clothes and he does sure. a, a mighty fine job of it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, um, you know, but, you know, even if you don't, if you're a man that didn't want to do that, then find another route to say, well, look, for the yeah. first couple of weeks, you know, Angel, can I count over you? you know, he could say, but, or I could ask you before I have to pay, Angel, could I count on you to once a week? Just wash my bed then. I'm not gonna even ask you about anything else, mm -hmm. but just my bed then. You say, sure, just put the basket out there on the floor. You ain't even gotta come to the door. I just grab it on my way to work or whatever. Yeah. And I keep on running. Mm -hmm. And next time I come through that way, I bring it to you. You know, there's ways that we can look out for one another yeah, to absolutely. say, absolutely. hey, absolutely. this yeah. this doesn't have to, the man doesn't have to sit there and feel like I'm just overwhelmed, I can't do all. Yeah. Call upon the resources that are in your life. Yeah. People are willing to help ask them if we put down the pride at, uh, within ourselves or just it's not a, it's not a crime to say look i need some help absolutely can you help me out brother for a week That's you true. know and you'd be surprised or if if kevin is not the cook say listen um i'm just making this up people in your sunday school class listen my wife had a baby yep. i'm gonna need y'all can i get can somebody can i have seven days or 14 days let's say can I have, can I get a commitment from you, my friends and family, brothers and sisters, everybody Absolutely. for the next 14 days? Can I, can I bank on you to come over on Monday and bring, take care of the meal? Right. You can say, well, what, do, you you say yeah, yeah, what do you want, it. what y'all want, what you like? Mm -hmm. And then you take, you take it upon yourself. This is how I can be a blessing to the band. Right you know, and uh, we ought to all, I mean, as brothers and sisters in Christ want to be able I can't solve everybody's problem, but there's a little bit. Yeah. This is the one little bit my brother can do for me yeah, right absolutely. now. You yeah, know? Absolutely. And so that's how we can minister to one another. That's good. And um, you know. I'm glad you shared that because a lot of people uh, don't know. They congratulate you. They bring you gifts. Yeah. They bring you flowers. I bring you all kinds of stuff. But the yeah. you know, <laughs> the, the body ministry, and that is yeah. Yeah. the body ministry is so important during these times and, and cycles and people. Yeah. And you know, um, and that blessed me to even say that because this is a message to all pastors, okay. you know, um, and so this is something they can share with their congregation. Especially, you know, you can be correct, I mean, sister so-and-so, I uh, just, a pastor, usually the first one uh, after, you know, the birth, you know, they know about pastor, pastor by the church. And how can we serve them? What can we serve they do that when it comes to funerals, yeah. you know, and the church steps up in an amazing way to support uh, the family, the visitation, and all kinds of stuff. Um, childbirth is no different. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to be honest with you, when she said that, uh, what popped into my head is the brothers, especially brothers who are it, could step up. That's right. Absolutely. And, and, and walk alongside that, that new day. Yeah, and Grand Longs did that. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You need to put close. That's right. That's you know, right. And, and say, man, don't be whining. That's don't right. be crying. <laughs> don't be acting like you a child. Right. You know, because you heard what Paul said. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, that when I act like a child, it was okay. But when I became a man, I put that mess away. Absolutely. And, and they need a brother, they need a strong, mature brother. Grab that neck. Come on, man. Uh, you need to help your wife. You need to support your wife. This is the time which you, you know, you are going through this with her. You're not an observer. That's right. You know, you are a participant. You're not sitting on the bench. You in the game, baby. Yeah. It's time to. Yeah. So that's 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 important. So uh, yeah, and so that's that's powerful. And so yeah, it's a it's an ordeal for um, 
a brother not to be insensitive. Can't be insensitive. Selfish. Can't be. They, the wife already has so many demands on her. Um, especially after you have you know, so many demands. And that baby, <laughs> that little demanding creature, that's right, is going to want everything you got. Everything. And so, um, a brother, uh, you know, brother can't be jealous. Brothers should be happy that they're bonding and growing together, and he should be part of the process. He should. And, and on that note, even if a mother is um, breastfeeding the child, that mother can, uh, when she's comfortable enough, go to the place where she can pump the breast milk and have it bottled. And now the father can participate in feeding the child. Absolutely. absolutely. Because, um, as you said, you shouldn't. We, the father shouldn't be a bystander. He's no bystander. No, this, no this is your force. This is his child. Yes. You know, get to know your child. Yes. Get to see how your child smiles yes. or acts or uh, they do their little funny thing. You know, yes. get to get to know your child and your child get to know you. Because the child ultimately is going to know the difference. That's mama and that's daddy. Mama sound like this, daddy sound like that, you know, and you want your child to uh, love you and to grow with you, but the best way, just like us with our Heavenly Father, we got to get to know Him. Absolutely. We got to go talk with Him, and He takes time to love us, He takes time to care for us, and correct us. but we won't know our Heavenly Father if we don't take time to know Him. The same, the natural father has to take time with his child. Yes. That's good. Let the child, you on the couch, put the child on your chest. Let the child go to sleep. Let the baby go to sleep. Right there on you. You can feel your presence. Mm -hmm. You know? I remember uh, when I, there was uh, an infant a while. I remember thinking, am I ever going to sleep in life again? <laughs> <laughs> I remember trying to think, hoping that, okay, maybe this will be the night that I'll sleep through. All right. And then it's now you're like, oh, oh, you just, you're, yeah, you just emotionally like going, oh. But um, I praise God because when Joe and Kevin would come home, um, I did. I gave, okay, here you go. <laughs> so Kevin would spend time with him and sure. play with him. And he just, they both had a wonderful time together. I'd be looking at that, I took little pictures. I said, look at that, look at that. But uh, I, I used to feel too for like a single mom. I said, I don't know how single mom uh, I, 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 I don't understand. I, don't I said, because I'm with him all day and I, I love it. But then I, uh, when he comes home, okay, it's your right. turn. <laughs> you go and you you be with him. But yeah, <clears throat> he, he did good. good. Except for the diapers. <laughs> no, it was a poopy diaper. <laughs> the he stuff the that was diaper. coming out of his body <laughs> was horrible. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you, it wasn't like I didn't try. <laughs> but what I did do was get my wife frustrated oh, because I'd be trying to change something. I'd be like, "Yeah, you hey, going like this." Hey, hey, I'd be ready to lose, lose my no, love, no, lose I my dinner. Get, get out, hey, get, get out of here! Because I'm not cleaning your mess. And he was like, "Lord, get it!" And he could go out the room. I love it. 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 He built a baby room. What oh, is that smell? My God! Oh. What was coming out that child? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something, but I, I did it. Yeah, yeah. Everything out. Everything out. I've done it. You just didn't put it on. Just didn't put it on. How about you, Ben? How did you handle that? <laughs> now that was powerful, wasn't it? Y'all going to want to see part two to get the rest of that. Check out these reflection questions and see how they can apply to your life and your circumstance. And I'm telling you, part two is going to be on Thursday at 6 p.m. You want to hear Van's response uh, to how he handled that as well. Okay. Well, I want you to pop this bad boy on your timeline, share it uh, with your friends, and use it in your small groups as you develop and grow in your marriage relationships. It can only get better if you work at it. Remember, no deposit, no return.